On this week's World of Saltwater Fishing, we're going light tackle fishing off Key Largo in the Florida Keys. I'll be with Captain Kevin Jeffries, and we're going to target everything from blackfin tuna. Looks like it's going to be sushi for dinner, George. Sushi for days. Cobia. There you go, George. You got him. <laughs> the big mutton snapper and groupers. This is grand day size. <laughs> it's going to be one incredible episode. Oh, there's a lunker, George. George Bover almost world of saltwater fishing, celebrating 21 years of fishing television excellence. Big fish don't stand a chance. Key Largo in the Florida Keys, the first key that you could reach from South Florida. Once again, I brought the Mark 6. We were docked at the Pilot House restaurant in Marina, and I was teaming up with Captain Kevin Jeffries. He specializes in reef and offshore fishing, and he's one of the very few who actually do the nighttime Kubera snapper thing out of North Key Largo during the July and August and early September spawn of those fish. However, on this particular outing, we we're gonna leave the heavy tackle behind. We were going light tackle fishing for a variety of pelagic species, and if successful there, we would go into some of the shallower reefs and make some drifts with live bait to try to capitalize on reef species. The diversity of fishing in Key Largo is, is unbelievable. From, uh, you know, we've got more patch reefs from Miami to Isla Mirada than anywhere in the Florida Keys. So our, our reef fishing is probably as good as it can get anywhere. We're five miles from deep water. We can fish the edge of the drop off for sailfish and, and within a few miles from there, be out catching pelagics, you know, dolphin, tuna, wahoo. And uh, we have a lot of different opportunities. It's a, it's a great spot with, uh, without a lot of travel. And you talk about a picture perfect tours and watered Keys day. Here we were, and you have to understand that this was the second week of December. The same period that we were out fishing, the Northeast was getting blanketed by big snowstorms. I mean, we had a gorgeous day. It was uh, flat calm, just a trickle of current to the north, which is normal there. You know, we'd set up in front of that wreck and, and uh, dump a few pilchards, put a couple live baits on, and slowly drift across, uh, you know, across the wreck. So here we were with absolutely no wind, uh, hardly any current, so you can imagine how slow our drift was. The advantage there is that that enables our baits more soak time over these zones. So we had the advantage of soaking these baits over a longer period of time over what looked like potentially productive bottom. So we had that in our favor. And I guess the second thing we had going in our favor was no sooner did we even, I don't even know if we put all the rods out, Kevin's rod, that little light uh, pen clash two with 10 pound test braid, goes down. Oh, sail, sail dog right here. <laughs> Lost him. Uh, ah. Did you pull? Here comes the sailfish towards the boat, uh, shaking its bill. It was coming towards the boat, it threw the hook. Uh, tough way to start the day, but yet that was a sign of things to come because that was definitely a promising sign. That was a good old opening act. And, uh, you know, we had activity almost immediately. I uh, had a shot at a sailfish, jumped him off, and uh, then immediately got into, you know, a decent bite of, of blackfin tuna. Feeling rainbow runner-like or blackfin-like? I think it's more blackfin-like. All but... right. Is that the braid outfit? No, this is her maybe, that's it, maybe it is. That's, yeah, that's 10-pound test braid. No, I better, you're dealing with it, 10-pound braid. I better not tighten that drag anymore then. <laughs> it's so fun. I mean, it complicates it a little here on this structure with the with the predators, but it's so much fun on light tackle. You know, you sit here, we always do this, and you know, you're just trying to look, peer through that water, trying to get a glimpse of color, which I just thought I see, I could see it coming yeah, up now. now. Still, it looks like a black thing. I could see beautiful gold black to it, silver belly, good luck. You, you watch this and you see the tuna circle you think we're getting close, but it is clear Florida Keys water. The thing is still down about 25, 30 feet. Still <laughs> yeah. have a ways to go. One more circle in there, and I'll get my shot on him there. Nice one, yeah. Real nice one. Got him. Got, uh, looks like it's going to be sushi for dinner, George. Sushi uh, for days. Uh, no complaints about that. <laughs> Especially when we're pulling them right out of the ocean. 
Florida Key style to Key Largo? They don't get much fresher. <laughs> it was uh, it was very active the first uh, three or four drifts. We, we were uh, at least caught one fish each drift, and if not, we were doubled up a couple times. It, uh, it, it was very good fishing and, uh, and a lot of fun. George Bull for almost World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly being brought to you by Penn, let the battle begin. Mako, you'll find them where the fish are. Fast Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. We'll be right back. On the flat Atlantic Ocean off Key Largo in the Florida Keys, Kevin Jeffries and I are live baiting for pelagics over a deep wreck. We're using 10 and 12 pound class pen spin tackle. The drift I mean, was really simple. He would sit there and go with the drift and we had enough live pilchards where Kevin was periodically live chumming. Again, didn't take long, my rod goes down. So now I'm on a fish fighting exactly like a blackfin tuna. Good way to start. Now I got 12 on this. Take your time. <laughs> Check this out. Smoking. Uh, you know, we're using light tackle, so it's uh, it's fun. They take a lot of drag, and then it's just a tug of war back to get them back to the boat. See what I got here. Maybe getting chased up. Uh, and, and the whole time you're praying that the predators don't get on them and, and, uh, and eat them up. Coming up near the surface, a blackfin that got bit by a shark. You know what? Here's the continuation of the shark issues. People say, well, the, the sharks have to eat too, but, um, you know, it's unfortunate when they have to eat behind your boat. You know, you're going down, and I felt that thing was at one point really smoking hard. And you, you're trying not to think shark, you open, it's just a big blackfin powering down. And, and it was a big blackfin <laughs> powering down at the start. <laughs> All right, you put this head in the box, I guess? Yeah, let's put his head in the box. We can still get a, we might still get a snack off him. So they call a head start, I guess. I got eaten here, I think. Yeah, I'm clean. There you go. Here we go. Smoke. Going straight down again. Here we go. <laughs> Every wreck seems to hold a different, a different species or, or, or be known for different fish. This particular spot that we were at is, is actually well known for rainbow runners, you know, as well as blackfin tuna, yellowtail snapper, and there he is. Got, got right, a big got, rainbow. Got the, is it a big rainbow? Yep. It is, too. Look at the size. We've got a glimpse of him. And it's a hard fight when they get it this yep. size. It is so funny because the first time that you catch a glimpse of the rainbow runner, you see this bright yellow tail in this bluish kind of a uh, head and, and, and midsection and body. I'm looking down, I thought he had a school dolphin, but it certainly wasn't fighting like a school dolphin. So this fish in the Pacific is called a yellowtail. Right. But in the Atlantic here, we don't call them yellowtails because when we talk about yellowtails, we talk about yellowtail snappers. We call them a rainbow runner. We're going to call it in the boat here in a second. We're calling it dinner. <laughs> I don't know about how well he's What do you want to do? Yeah, I'll see if I can get on. All right. <laughs> Good. Beautiful. There we go. Check these out. You know, when you, you see these things coming up, it's like There you go, you got it, George. That is a pretty hefty one. Yeah, it's a nice you, size you one. You see him coming down with the. He's <laughs> <laughs> trying to get away on you, George. That particular uh, spot, we, uh, we we catch rainbow runners year-round. They're not very common fish in the Atlantic. I mean, they're obviously they're here, and, and you'll find them on occasion, but they're very you know very inconsistent. But that particular spot holds them, and we catch them regularly year-round. Very tasty uh, sushi-grade fish that uh, that uh, you can eat raw, or you can uh, you can cook that thing up. It's delicious either way. George got what we call a smoker. Well, oh, the other one's trying to go. This one's trying to go now too. I can let you go under me, George. All right. Take this one and get it out of your way. Feels nice and heavy. Let's see what we got here. It's a blackfin to me. It looks like a blackfin to me, too. Uh, we know what I it's did good. on this one. I dropped a 30 fluorocarbon and a one aught VMC circle hook. When it's this calm, lots of times. There's a gap I'll, up there. Yeah, when it gets this calm, all lots of times I'll go to 25 or 30, George. A yes. little lighter leader, a little lighter little hook. Yes. Oh, yeah, nice fish. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now you ask you have the question. You, you know, we started off with some heavier leader early on, getting some good bites. It waned off a little bit. So you're thinking, going lighter or are you? Oh, yeah, for sure. Lighter, lighter leader, lighter, especially as the sun gets up. You know, it reveals more of your tackle, more of your gear, a uh, combination of things. They're getting used to us being here too, I think. People yeah. like to tell you the fish aren't that smart, but I don't know that I buy it. Now the terminal setup, we had 10 pound test suffix 832 braid. It was the ghost color, which is a white color. From there, 
I tied in using a Bristol knot, about 10 feet, 12 feet of a 30 pound test, suffix Invisalign fluorocarbon leader, and also a very small hook. We were using one aux inline VMC circle. So the Termalam was uh, very light and stealth like. All right, wanna clip that for me? Swallow that one aux fish box. Be so kind to open that up. We'll get them on the ice. And as far as taking a day off the water, which is really spending a day on the water, world famous John Pennicant State Park. It's a gorgeous spot though to snorkel, dive. There's so many snorkel and dive spots that are shallower than 35 feet there. I think it's the most in the world if I remember right. It's a very, very special place. If you like kayaking, you could do it here. It's a way that you could spend an entire day learning about our ecosystem from the reefs themselves to the mangroves. There's a lot of mangrove creeks that you could explore here as well. John Pennicamp State Park, if you do have a day off or you want to take a little break from the fishing, go see this place, take it in. It's really an amazing world-class destination. George Paul Barolo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly being brought to you by Simrad, the new Simrad NSS Evo 3S chart plotter. The best just got better. Rapala Coastal, another great day. Suffix, always use the best line. Starbright Book Care Products, Bunny technology and performance since 1973. We'll be right back. After catching our share of pelagics over deep wreck, Kevin Jeffries and I settle into a drifting mode for bottom fish, and we didn't have to wait long to hook up. We're off Key Largo in the Florida Keys. You like good fish, George? It is good. I'd like to see what it, what it, what it is. It's giving it's a hard be, time. It's gonna be a mutton or grouper. It's a mutton, it's a, a beautiful size to yeah. it. Give him a good fight all the way to the surface. You have a pretty long leader? I do. You might just slide the uh, the swivel with the sinker off and it gets the wind on from there. Here's my sinker coming up yeah, too. Yeah, that'll help. Oh, a nice uh, here we go. the button? Just leave it. Yeah, nice button. You want to net him or are you going to get yeah. grab him or how are you going to do this? I'm going to definitely net him. Oh, yeah. This is a grand day size. <laughs> <laughs> hey, George, what you got to say about that? George got doubled up on a really nice mutton snapper. Uh, I was able to put an absolute really, really nice mutton snapper in the boat. This thing fought all the way. <laughs> all the way to the surface, yeah. I mean, he started to blow up at the end, as you can see, but he fought all the way to the surface. In Key Largo, we call that the marriage counselor, George. Hey, you take that? that home, everything's good. <laughs> <laughs> so the big mutton was iced down in a fish box, and, you know, what an incredible day. Gorgeous out. We're starting to crank a lot of fish. So we take one of those 10 pound test uh, pen clash two spinners, throw it out with a pilcher in the surface, and we're letting that drift. Cobia, pretty sure. Kevin got the rod, somehow managed to get it above all the other rods and get to the bow of the boat to where it was just Kevin and the Cobia in open, clean water. He's gonna be close. Hang on, let me get the net, let me get this rod up so I can help you here. Nice, okay. Cobia. He's gonna be close to a keeper size, George. All right. It's an etter, or should I gaff it? Let me... um, he, I'm pretty sure it's big enough, George. Let me have a look at him if he's, he's going close. in He's close. All right. You want to net him? Oh. He's going to lose his mind when you net him, though. OK, it's fine. Oh, he, saw that. That's what that's... he saw that net, he turned. Yeah. He's going to play him out a little. Yeah, so go ahead. I'm pretty sure he's legal, but I just don't want to stick. <laughs> I just don't want to stick a hole in him. Yeah, I hear you. I know what you mean. Find out he's short, I feel bad. There you go, George. You got him. <laughs> it was uh, comical because I just had a conversation with George about how yeah, we don't get many cobias in Key Largo. Like it happens a couple times a year, but it's just that uh, you know, until you've fought one of those, you probably don't understand. They just they don't ever quit, and when they do quit, they haven't quit. It's a really fun fish to catch, and uh, and again, very good table fare. Very nice, George. You excellent job. Very nice. Pretty and fish. You make sure to, to net him rather than gaff him, just to make sure he was legal. Yep. If it wasn't, he'd go back in, but he certainly did it and then some. So it was worth waiting for. That 10 pound braid you're fighting him on? Yeah, 10 pound wild. braid. He was hooked well, though. 10 pound braid, 25 pound leader. George's Tackle Locker. Brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. Attention to detail is paramount at King Sailfish. For example, Instead of a quick and average paint application on a replica mold, followed by affixing static, non-lifelike eyes, 
the artists at King Sailfish take time to duplicate the exact colors of a fish, including any unique blemishes or hues. Layering is a process where several layers of color are utilized to bring forth a lifelike representation of a lit up fish. It's also used to duplicate an angler's picture of the coloration of that very same fish as it's about to come in the boat or right after. This is in addition to the reproduction of skin or scale patterns, vents, internal detailing of mouth and gill plates, and downturned eyes. King Sailfish encourages the release of all fish not to be utilized as food. For a mount, simply measure your catch, snap a photo or two, and release it. King Sailfish mounts will take it from there. Mercury Performance Stats, Key Largo, Florida Keys, Power, Triple Mercury Verado 4 to Horsepower Outboards, Speed, 40 miles per hour, Total Miles, 48, Total Fuel Burn, 54 gallons. George Pope for almost World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly being brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key Wests. Visit flakeys.com. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum. Order yours today at papaspilar.com. Float On, the original aluminum immersible boat trailer. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. There we go. All right, what you got? Filtered on the top. So the next day, the winds came up, we go out to the wreck. We were basically getting set up and that rod goes smoking off. And that 10 pound test braid is just going in the horizon. Love watching that rod tip. Look at that thing go, huh? Straight down. Yeah, you, got, you might have a big black fin, Kevin. That wouldn't break my heart, George. Not at all. Yeah, big black bit. fin would be real nice. Got color. Big black fin, wonker. Doesn't seem like he wants to come to the boat, guys. He doesn't seem like he's super excited about going for a ride with us. I don't get it, it's a nice boat. I feel like we're good people. <laughs> Got him. Oh, that's a lunker. Oh, there's a lunker, George. There. That thing took you a while, 10 pound, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, that 10 pound uh, wore me out before it wore him out, I think. George was able to stick a gaff in him and get him in the boat. That was, uh, I mean, for a lot of people, as good a, as good a black fin tuna as you'll ever catch on, uh, on light tackle. That's, uh, that's probably as good as it's gonna get. Well, check that. You had a 30 pound leader, 10 pound test, Suffolk State 32 braid, and that little tiny VMC hook. Now check the leader. Is any fraying above that hook at all or that just did its job? I mean, there may be just a very, very little. Oh, uh, you can take the hook out. All right, so Kevin and I put this big black fin in the boat. We made one more pass. Uh, it was uneventful, so we said, you know what? It, it's been an incredible day. Let's go back in. By the time that we washed the boat, the tackle, cleaned the big black fin, we already had the uh, pilot house wanted to host us for a dinner around 5 or 5.30 that afternoon. So, so gave us and the entire production team time to get back to the Ocean Point Suites. Uh, again, another spot that's been here for a long time here in, uh, you know, on the south end of Key Largo, on the ocean side. Boater friendly, fishing friendly. Once you come into property, you look at the boats on the trailers that are here. If you have a uh, boat that's 25 feet and less, they have their own private marina. It's set up for, it really is set up well for fishing and, and, and boating. It's, uh, you know, access to, to the ocean side of the island is, is right here. Pretty little suites and it's, uh, it's a real nice spot and, and like I say, really geared well towards, uh, you know, the fishing and boating crowd. With, as far as the amenities, swimming pool, they have tennis courts. So Ocean Point Suites in Key Largo, once again, we based our operation and I'm sure we'll be back here again next season. Get all ready for dinner, come back in around uh, five o'clock in time for uh, their happy hour, had our own outside table and just enjoyed a, uh, a sensational dinner of that big black fin tuna that, that Kevin had caught in incredible uh, touch to our trip. Uh, Pilot House Restaurant, Key Largo, and the fabulous Florida Keys. And like I said, full service marina, best of all, it's very convenient. You leave the marina, you're one mile away from the open Atlantic. It's been multiple trips with George. We've had uh, a lot of really good luck and good success fishing together. And you always wonder when, when's this gonna get complicated? When, there's, there's a tough trip coming, I can feel it, you know? And A fun person to be with, has an excellent sense of humor, 
and he's really on top of the fisheries out of Key Largo. I think maybe when uh, when George turns the camera on, something happens. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, but I'm gonna call it another, uh, another Key Largo first down. And as cold as the winter may be, up north, the fishing down here only gets hotter and the weather is absolutely sensational. Key Largo in the fabulous Florida Keys. If you'd like to keep up with our fishing adventures, please follow me on Instagram. I'm at George Poveromo. On Facebook, I'm at facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. And you can view our episodes at any time on our YouTube channel, George Poveromo TV. We'll see you out on the water.